Hello, and thank you for watching Accelerate with Nerdio. In this video, I'm going to walk you through configuring Autoscale with multi-user desktop and remote app host pools through Nerdio Manager for MSP. So let's dive right in. I just want to mention again, multi-user desktop pools and multi-user remote app pools function in the same way from an auto scale perspective. So they're both getting covered in this video. So I'll click on auto scale. I'll go to configure. And this is going to allow me to control standardizing, scaling, staging, and healing of my hosts. So let's walk through these settings one by one. First here at the top, I like to say this is where you're going to define what the host will look like within the pool, right? So you can provide a naming convention, you're going to determine the desktop image, and then the size of the VM and the OS disk. And you also have an option where you can even reuse or choose not to reuse host names, right? So in, in this type of environment, these hosts are dynamic. They'll, they'll get scaled in, they'll get scaled out. Um, they will get recreated often depending on the scaling settings. So whether you reuse host names is a pretty important consideration. Okay, so now let's dive into host pool sizing. So what's important is first, let's define what the status of an active host is. So we see we have two options. We have uh, WVD agent available or VM started. Now I want to mention that we only recommend using WVD agent available, which means it's receiving heartbeats from the WVD service to ensure that you have hosts in your pool that are accepting connections. So the next thing we're going to do is define the base pool capacity. So base host pool capacity. Right now this is set to five. That is the maximum amount of hosts the pool will ever contain. So this would be all hosts running or stopped. Status isn't a factor here. This pool will never be larger than five hosts. Now the minimum active capacity set is one right now here. This is the active defined is WVD agent available and I will always have at least one of those in my pool, right? So we're saying that this pool will always have at least one active host ensuring that there is somewhere for a user to land. Um, this can be set to zero and we have a separate video that will cover that. So basically having a pool that has no running hosts until you define that it should. Now, this next option right here, burst beyond base capacity, we talked about how the base host pool capacity is only ever going to be five, right? It should never be above five unless I trigger what I call my insurance policy here. So this doesn't have to be configured. This would allow that pool capacity to actually increase by two. So it would go to seven. And then those two would also be the first host to get removed. So, you know, if you find that you're constantly using this burst beyond setting, you might want to look at your actual pool sizing and usage because it's possible you've maybe undersized the total capacity if you're constantly, you know, dipping into that insurance policy. Again, these will always be removed first during scale in. Okay. I actually prefer to jump to pre-stage host, which is number three next, and then we'll go to scaling logic after that. And the reason I do this is it allows me to define active, and then there's that term again, right? Active hosts, so WVD agent available, that will be available at the start of work hours, right? So this means that if I determine my work hours are Monday through Friday, uh, the majority of my users come in at 8 a.m., so we want to have X amount of hosts ready, that way when everyone walks in the door, they're not waiting for a new host to spin up because their demand is driving it. We're saying that in our five capacity host pool, we're gonna have, let's say three hosts uh, ready to start accepting connections at 8 a.m. Monday through Friday. And then the scaling logic will start to determine what the environment looks like after that. But no matter what, Monday through Friday, when people walk in at 8 a.m., there'll be at least three hosts ready to start balancing those connections. Excellent. Now let's talk about scaling logic, right? So this is that option number two. This is what allows us to grow or shrink the amount of hosts in the pool. Generally scale out right here is going to be driven by user demand increasing. Scale in right here Oops, is going to be driven by a policy or demand decreasing, right? So, you know, let's talk about the three triggers first here at the top. We have CPU usage, which is going to look at CPU utilization across all the hosts and either create or remove hosts based on that utilization. 
there's average active sessions. This is actually going to look at the average number of active sessions across all hosts and then trigger an action of either scale out or scale in based on that. And then available sessions, we'll see here, is actually going to look at a cap of session count per host and then create or remove hosts to ensure the up to amount is satisfied, right? So maintain up to X amount of sessions. And then we see that we've got a maximum amount of sessions per host. Now, again, we highly recommend using CPU usage, especially when an environment's new, right? Get an idea of what it's going to look like, how user demand is driving it. And then once you find that sweet spot of the resources that should be available, you could start to look at maybe making that more session based with the other options. Now let's also point out this second option here, scale in restrictions. So we'll notice that that scale in trigger here, or those two triggers, stay the same across all three of these auto scale triggers. So, you know, the point here is that what this is gonna do is determine if and when scale in should occur, right? And scale in matters because that is when hosts are being removed from the environment, which means that users might have an action that occurs, right? They're going to be asked to log off of a host if it's being scaled in, then they'll log back in and it places them on another host, right? So deciding when scale out and scale in occurs and educating users about that is highly important. They need to understand that, uh, and I'll point down here to number four, there's messaging that can be set up and triggered that, you know, this type of scaling or uh, resource on demand is available and if you get a message asking you to log off, uh, then, then know that you're going to log out, log back in, and likely be placed on a resource with, with more available consumption or more available resources. So again, scale and restrictions, um, we can actually go ahead and set it to, to only start removing hosts maybe after hours. So let's say I put 7 p.m. here, and in our, our example, I'll say that I, I do it from 7 p.m., let's say, to 4 a.m. So I'm saying that I want my least amount of hosts or I want to start removing hosts during the, the evening hours when no one's working. And I've also specified that at 8 a.m. I'm going to make sure I have at least three hosts. So, you know, if this, as it's set to one, is a CPU frequency below 65 or below 40 percent, I'm sorry, because it's scale in, um, after 7 p.m., I'll get down to one host, which is my minimum active capacity. If CPU exceeds 65% and it's after 8 a.m., right, I've started with three hosts, I can go up to five. So there's a way to kind of play with this so that you can balance uh, when you're paying for resources to be available, having them available when you have a frequency of users, and then letting user demand drive additional hosts that might be made available. So really important to understand all of those options. Uh, and then I'll also mention, right, that we have auto heal broken hosts, which I'm going to go deeper into in a separate video, but this is a really important function that you can enable when you're setting up auto scale and you can set statuses that allow it to check hosts, attempt to restart hosts, and even remove and rebuild hosts if needed, right? So we're looking for hosts that aren't allowing sessions or aren't uh, operating as expected within your pool boundary, right? Because you've set that you're going to have at least five hosts in your pool. If some of them aren't working, then then they're actually, you know, they're, they're um, clogging the pool's ability to work correctly. So we want to auto heal, which is, you know, reboot or remove those hosts and put new ones in their place. So I'll stop there. Uh, please visit help.nerdio.net for access to all of our amazing content and continue to look for more videos on auto scale across other pools. Thank you so much.